What is up guys? In today's tutorial we're going to be learning about masks. What is it that masks do? Um, how do they function? How do you, how do you use them? Um, how do you animate them? And most importantly, how do you make a mask and not a shape? So essentially what a mask is, is a way of hiding or showing a specific object. So it can be text, it can be a picture, it can be shapes. It doesn't matter what it is that you're working with so long as uh, it's an object or it's something. And then you can use a mask to hide it. Now in order to use a mask, you have to use a shape. A shape will create a mask. You can create either with a rectangle, a circle, or you can use the pen tool. A pen tool is a... Uh, We'll cover a little bit more about the pen tool later on, but for those of you that are in my Photoshop classes uh, or Illustrator with advanced graphic design, we've used the pen tool before, so you guys kind of have at least an idea of, of what the pen tool is capable of doing. Uh, so without uh, you know keeping you guys uh, this long, let's just go ahead and jump right into After Effects, and let's go ahead and, and see what we have here. So one of the things we have here uh, this first one that I got is a couple of pictures and you're going to notice as I play them Alright, so that's the first animation and as you notice here this right here that's passing by that's a mask it's revealing a certain part of another image and then eventually the mask gets bigger and it reveals the rest of the image. Um, so that's ex kind of the best way I can explain it. Uh, a mask is just revealing or hiding or showing different parts of an image, shape, whatever. So if we go over to mask number two, you'll notice that on this one, I'm actually revealing uh, text. So I have already text typed out and then I just reveal the text so that you can see it in a unique creative way. So let's go ahead and check this one out. So as you can see, um, in this little point in time, I have a mask going over sideways, uh, a mask revealing those words little by little, and then revealing tutorials, and then the line just kind of pops in from the bottom, and then a mask blurs in to cover everything up. So in this tutorial we're going to be making these two. Now I hope that by the end of this tutorial you kind of get a better sense of what masks are and how they work. Um, so without anything else let's go ahead and jump into After Effects and start working with this tutorial. So I already have here all my stuff uh, so I'm just going to keep them open to make sure uh, I can keep going back and forth and making sure I know what I'm doing. But let's go ahead and right click right here and create a new composition. Uh, you can go ahead and title yours masks, but since I already have masks here, I'll go ahead and put mask tutorial. And then click OK. And then I have a black background, which is fine. Um, so in here I should... Uh, I should have already provided for you these two pictures of this car that we're going to be using. And then you also have the finished product. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and drag all these pictures in here. And the finished product as well. Now you notice that these pictures are a little bit big. So I'm going to go ahead and just, I mean this will vary but you know go up to 12 so we can resize these images. Make sure you hold shift. I'm just going to go ahead and put these images right here. Go ahead and grab the other one. Resize that one as well. Uh, if you can't see what you're doing to the other image, just go ahead and press the little eyeballs that are right here. And you'll be able to see the image that's underneath. And then the last one, I'll press the eyeball right here. Make sure I make this one a lot smaller. There we go. So now I can go ahead and press all these and go back here to fit. Now that will allow me to see all the three images that I have right here. So one, two, and three, right? So now let's go ahead and work with masks. So like I mentioned, masks are just essentially shapes or you can use the pen tool to create the masks. 
In this tutorial, we'll use the shape tool and we'll use the pen tool so you can see the difference between them. Um, so the first one I want to do is go ahead and use the shape tool. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one that says finished and I'm going to go ahead and grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to set this over to around 50% just so I can be able to see a little bit of what's going on here. Now if you don't already see all these little squares and icons you can press this guy right here and this will toggle on all your little squares and stuff to show up. So I'm going to go ahead and make a, a mask right here. As soon as I make the mask you notice that the picture kind of hides and you get now a selection of what you want to do. Now the reason why we were able to make a mask and not a shape, so I'll go ahead and go Control Z. You notice that finished is actually selected. If I were to have not selected that and then select the rectangle tool, I would have then created a shape. A shape that is currently not filled in with anything, but let's just go ahead and fill it in so you guys can see. And then click OK. So that's how I would have created a shape. So this is why I say that it's very important when we're working with masks for you to understand that in order for you to be able to create a mask, you have to select a layer that you want to put the mask on. If you don't select the layer, then you're essentially just going to make a shape. So if you ever happen to make a shape when you're actually trying to create a mask, just know that the reason behind it is because you haven't actually created uh, you haven't actually selected an image or a layer that you want to create the mask on. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the shape and just select my finished layer, grab my rectangle, just create a small rectangle right here. The amount of size does not matter. In the end, all we're trying to do is create a mask, animate the mask, and that's about as good as it gets. We're not really going to focus too much on how big and small the mask is. So from here, you notice that when you create the mask, you now have this little mask layer right here. And if you open it up, voila, here are your keyframes. And there's a lot of things you can do with them, but we're going to be focusing on mask path. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on mask path right here at the very beginning. And then just press Control and Shift and go 1, 2, 3, 4. And right there at 4, I'm going to go ahead and click another keyframe right here on the side. So that's going to create two keyframes and I'm going to just go over here to the first one and I'm going to select my move tool or selection tool. With my selection tool you'll notice that these two are currently colored in rectangles but the moment I click in this gray area they turn into little circles. So what I want to do is select those circles and color them in like that and move them over here to this side. There we go. Now it's completely hidden. So now I'll click in the gray area again, anywhere in the gray, and select this bottom two. Sorry. Go ahead and click mask right here. Make sure they're circles and select this bottom two. Now I'm going to drag this over to the side. Perfect. So from here, what I want to do is click on the arrow to go over to my next keyframe. Perfect. In this keyframe, Okay, so this is actually wrong. So I'll go ahead and go go back to this keyframe and then I'll delete this one right here. So from here, I'm actually going to just move again. One, two, three, four, and add a keyframe. The reason why is because I want it to look the same. I didn't, I made a mistake the first time and it was like standing up and down. So what I want to do now is make sure it goes slanted side to side. Um, so from here, when all of them are selected, you notice all four squares are selected, I'm just going to move this guy all the way to the other side. Perfect. So now, when I see this, animate this, you notice that it goes from left to right. Perfect, which is what I want. So I'll go to this uh, second keyframe we have and go another one, two, three, four. Perfect, right there. Now, I'll go ahead and click in this gray area and then just select these two and stretch it out this way. Perfect. There we go. So now we have this. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Uh, it goes from one side and then stretches to the other side to reveal the image that is currently uh, the finished one. I'll go ahead and move finished over to the bottom. 
And then I'll go ahead and do the same thing with this specific image. So I'll go to the very beginning, go ahead and select my rectangle, make a little mask right here, grab this, make sure I click on the gray area, select these two. By the way, I'm selecting these two by holding shift. So I'll go ahead and move this over to the side. Select all four of them and just drag it over to this side. Perfect. Now I can go ahead and click on mask path, go one, two, three, four, and then move these guys over this way. And then one, oops, let's do that again. I, I pressed the wrong button. And then move this over one, two, three, four. And then click on the gray area so that there are circles. Select these and bring it back this way. There we go. So now it reveals that one. And I'll go ahead and put that one underneath. Then grab this last one right here and do the same thing. Go ahead and open up masks. Take right here. Oh, <laughs> I made a mistake. So you notice that I have this still left at the 2 and 20 seconds. So I need to make sure that that's actually over here at 0. So I'm going to go ahead and click 0. And just make sure that that one is right there at 0. Perfect. Uh, I think. <laughs> so from here, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. And just go ahead and move this guy over this way. And then one, two, three, four. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the gray area, select these two dots, and then move this this way over here. All right, cool. So now we have everything happening at the same time. Looks like a mess. So the image we want to see first, before anything else, is this this uh, empty empty road so let's go ahead and put the empty road to come out first we'll put this guy up here but I don't want to see him yet so let's go ahead and get select this guy press U and let's just erase the keyframes for this specific image and select the mask and press delete. All right, so we're actually going to delete the mask on the second image. Uh, reason is because we want that image to be showing at all times. So here, this one will play, and that one shows up. Perfect. Right after that, we're going to bring finished up here. We're just going to move finished over to this side. So one plays, gets big, and the other one plays and gets big. So that's pretty much how you use masks in this specific project. Um, the very last thing that I did was right click here, create a new solid, make the solid whatever color you feel like, click OK, name it as solid color, uh, and then we'll, we'll do the same thing, create a mask on it. Make sure that it's happening towards the end. So right there is fine. Or actually, let's go ahead and play this. So that comes out, reveals. And right around here, we'll go ahead and move this guy. Oops. Make sure you click on those squares when you're trying to move it. We'll move this guy over here. Then we'll select these two and bring it over to the side. Go ahead and click on Mask Path and just animate this in one, two, three, four to just roll in like that. Perfect. So now we have one, two, and the last one to close it all out awesome so that was pretty easy i think
Um, go ahead and take your time, work on this one, and then come back to the next part of the video when you are done. All right, guys, so I think you all have probably finished up by now with uh, the part one of the tutorial. The last thing that I forgot to mention uh, to go ahead and do is after you've done all this, go over to around the 10 second mark right here. So go ahead and go to 10 seconds and just go ahead and press the letter N on your keyboard. So N is going to bring in the little workspace or work area right there. And that way you can just go to composition and add to media encoder and just export it as mass tutorial number one. So now that we're done with part one, we're now going to start working on part two of this. So part two, we're going to go ahead and press new composition. And I'm just going to name this one mass two tutorial because I already have, you know, the first one. And then on the first part, I also forgot to mention the dimensions and all that, but it's going to be a 1920 by 1080. Make sure lock aspect ratio is turned on, uh, 30 frames, and then 30 seconds. 30 seconds is just uh, in case it's longer, but we're cutting it shorter on 10 seconds, but just leave it at 30 for now. And click OK. So let's go ahead and take a look at number two again. Now I noticed I put in a little song. It's up to you if you want to add the song. It's not that important. Um, I just added for sake of having a background, uh, a background music going on, but you know, you can choose to add it or not. Uh, it's not going to count against you. What will are, are your masks? Do you do your masks correctly or do them wrong? So this one, as you can see, is pretty simple. And if you paid close attention, I used something from the tutorial, uh, this little part right here. So hopefully you all remember that one because I'll be trying to use that a lot. I actually like it a lot. Anyways, go ahead and come here. The very first thing we're going to do is create a background. Um, as you can see in Mass 2, I have this kind of like a gray background, but it, it doesn't matter. So right click, new, and solid. A solid creates your background. So I'll go ahead and name this one BG because it's going to be my background. And you know, I'll go with some, like a baby blue, I guess, maybe. Uh, maybe even, yeah, let's go with one of these green colors. All right, and click OK. Alright, so that's going to be my background. And for this one, just for the sake of it, I'll go ahead and add the song too. Perfect. Alright, so uh, here you can essentially add whatever you want. Uh, but just make sure that when you do add stuff, uh, that you have enough words uh, to... So basically I have gons, which is one. And then this little tiny thing, which is like Photoshop, Illustrator, and blah, blah, blah. And then tutorials. So just to give you an example of things you can type, uh, my dog's name is Luna. So I'll go ahead and select that. Go over here to next to bold. Uh, you don't have to copy my fonts either. You know, get creative with what you do. I'll make this a little bit big and put this one right here. Maybe right there on top. And then in a small sentences or Luna, I'll put here Boston Terrier because she's a Boston Terrier. Uh, go ahead and put light. Just make this a little bit smaller. And I'll put this right underneath uh, the U. A little bit this way. There we go. Cool. And then in small words, I'll put the best. Ever select all that and make that a lot smaller, and I'll go ahead and put that right here. Boom, perfect. Make this a little bit smaller, make sure that kind of like uh, let me zoom into it. Maybe I'll put this one to touch that. And then this one can kind of touch there, a little bit down, put that in here, maybe I'll even put the best, center this like this, bring this over here, maybe put it a little bit higher, whatevs, right, there we go. Select all of them, 
mine is the background you notice I selected my background right here so I'm gonna go ahead and press control and just deselect my background move these more over to the center right around there and that's perfect and then I'll go ahead and grab my rectangle tool now notice in this part guys I'm grabbing my rectangle tool and none of these layers are actually selected now that part is actually very important I don't want to select anything so I can actually create a rectangle I'll go ahead and put that right there select it move it just a little bit down and alright so now we have this I'll change this white over to a dark green and I'll remove the stroke and put none now I need you guys to give me just a really quick second and I'll be right back as you can see my battery on my MacBook is about to die so you snap my fingers and I'm back there we go so back to where we were at right here uh, so let's see so we have Luna the best Boston Terrier the best ever Boston Terrier and we have our line pretty cool that's all we need so first things first let's go ahead and begin with Luna now, if you guys remember how to create that awesome little effect that they showed us, we're going to right click on Luna, go ahead and put create shapes from text. Now this part is not anything to do with masks, it's just uh, a cool little effect and then adding masks to it later. So now that we have our outlines right here, we're going to go ahead and open Luna up, select content, make sure you select content, please do not just like click on here and that's it make sure you actually select contents and then go to add after you go to add you're just gonna click trim paths and if you remember how this works open up trim paths just put start and end control and shift and then arrow keys one two three four and we'll go ahead and add more keyframes right here both of these need to be set to a hundred so a hundred and a hundred and then we're going to go over to this side and both of these need to be set to zero. Now if you remember the reason why you don't see anything is because they both start and end at the exact same time. So we need to select both of these that are underneath. Hold alt on your keyboard and just go one, two, three, four. There we go. So now as you can see, there'll be some movement. Now the reason why this looks all weird and crazy is because silly me if you look up here I left the fill and not a stroke so it's trying to fill in this like crazy thing and so it looks kind of weird and messed up so what I gotta do is make sure I have Luna outline selected make sure I put hey I don't want to fill bro I just want an outline so let's go ahead and go to stroke click on this click OK and now we got ourselves some cool little lines right uh, this is up to you if you guys want to do it doesn't really matter but I'm gonna go ahead and go to keyframes easy ease go to my graph editor select all of these guys make sure to zoom in for a more clear view and bump this up just so you can go fast and slow uh, there we go so there you go you don't have to do that part it's up to you completely up to you it doesn't really matter uh, so now that we have that we need to animate Luna right so let's go ahead and make sure that you press U on your keyboard right here on outlines bring up this little dudes and click on the arrow so that you're right at the last one and then click on our actual Luna bring it back out and let's go ahead and open this up as well actually it doesn't matter right now so what we're going to do now is create a mask but this time we're going to create a mask using the pen tool so how does the pen tool work you select the pen tool the pen tool essentially is just click, 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 click. So I'm going to click one time, click one time, click one time, click and click. There you go. We've created a mask. That's how the pen tool works. Why would you ever want to use the pen tool, you ask? Because you, you're more free to create whatever kind of shape you can connect the dots to. So sometimes you might want to do a crazy shape because you're trying to maybe mask out a person out of a background and you have to go click 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 so, so you know it's we'll get to the pen tool later in, in t as time goes by so let's go ahead and open up Luna now let's go ahead and open up masks mask right here and mask path 
right at this exact dot we want a keyframe. Now we want to go back all the way to the beginning. We want to add another keyframe. So we want it to look just the way it looks right there. But once it gets over here to this other keyframe, we want to make sure that we select the green area first to make sure these turn into circles. And then holding shift, click and click. We want to just come and do this. Voila, we've discovered Luna. And we click OK. So now we see this happening. Pretty cool, right? So that's a cool, unique little way that we can unveil something, right? And it makes it look a lot better. Right here, we'll now select uh, the best ever. Yay! Using the pen tool again, we'll go ahead and click right here, click right here, then here, then here, and then here to close it back up. So now, as soon as Luna is unveiled, we'll go ahead and open up this guy, open up its mask, mask right here, select the path. Then go control shift, arrow keys, one, two, and three. Let's just do three for this one. Select their move tool, and let's just maybe go up on this one. Right there. Uh, so this one's actually in reverse, as you can see. It's showing, and then he hides. That was my bad. But there's an easy way to fix this without having to do this all over again. Select both of these keyframes. Right click on these keyframes. Keyframe assistant. And just put time reverse. That's just going to reverse what we basically did. So now, it shows best ever. Now let's go ahead and grab uh, Boston Terrier. Select our rectangle tool, just click a quick little mask right here. Boom, perfect. There we go. So now we can go ahead and add mask path right there. Control Shift, one, two, three, and add another one right here. So using our arrow key, we'll go backwards, and on this one, we'll select our mouse, and let's just, I don't know, bring it straight over, right? Perfect. And now we're going to select our little line right here. We're going to go ahead and click P for position. And just click a keyframe right there. Move it one, two, three. And put another keyframe right there. Using our arrow keys, we're going to go back in time. And move this guy down to the bottom. And we're going to select both of these keyframes. And let's have this line come up kind of come in in between both of these things and then perfect we have a cool little animation that says Luna the best ever Boston Terry uh, so that's a cool unique way to kind of reveal things show things off and you know get a cool uh, aspect of you know after effects and what it's capable of now don't get confused here although we're using this mask just for reveals I'm gonna show you a cool way on the next assignment of how to use masks and green screen to do something really cool so basics first guys I know some of you are like oh man after effects is so much stuff and so boring fun things can happen uh, and you can do cool things with it but we gotta learn the basics before we can move forward to the harder stuff so uh, that being said, the last thing here is just to cover everything up. So we'll go ahead and create blank new uh, solid. Make sure we turn this solid into black and just put here finish, right? Click OK. Make sure it's at the very top. Zoom out a little bit. Grab your rectangle. Boom. Make that shape right here. Right when everything is revealed, Let's just go ahead and add a keyframe to our mask. One, two, three. Add another keyframe. And let's just bring this guy like this. And then this guy like that. There we go. That's actually kind of cool because it looks like it's kind of speeding through. So I'll make this guy a little more stretched out and this guy a little more like this 
and see how that looks. Yeah. Perfect. And so there was a final step here. And if you notice here, you can kind of see all the jaggedy little lines that it's making. So what we're going to do is go ahead and press motion blur and motion blur right here. So you notice right here, one of the things it's doing is now it looks kind of blurry at this little edge. And so now we can just play it like this. Boom, voila, there it goes, it finished. And so that's it right here. As soon as it turns black, we'll just put it over to like 515. Go ahead and press N on your keyboard and you can go ahead and uh, finish that up and then go to composition add to render queue or I mean add to media encoder and we're done with this tutorial guys I hope you understood something today and I hope you learned about masks uh, I know there will be questions throughout the day uh, just go ahead and raise your hand let me know I'll try to help you as best as I can but if anything just go back to the tutorial I hope I covered it as well as I could that you can you know your answers can be your questions can be answered in the tutorial itself. All right, guys, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.